Well, folks, we're back, and worse than ever here at Ben After Dark. We're now two full weeks into the Kamala Harris for president campaign, and she's MIA, gone, no interviews. Now she's just a memory from our past, like Ellen Page. She's like Waldo with a creepy laugh. You know, I'm never going to (laughs) be. She's laid out no plans. She's given us zero answers. In fact, here she is reading from a binder and then running away from questions. Thank you all. Uh, Madam President, will you be meeting Evan and Paul when they return? Ah, the salute. And um, she's better at climbing stairs, at least. Who does she think she is, Joe Biden? Well, actually, yes, because Joe Biden is missing, too. Still, just like Ellen Page. We have no president. We also have no press. They aren't questioning anything about Kamala Harris's record, her lies, her angry staff, her radicalism. See, she is extremely radical, despite the fact that in the last two weeks, she has reversed her stance on everything. Fracking, gun seizures, banning private health insurance, banning plastic straws, government job mandates, and a bunch of other stuff. But the press are so busy performing a colonoscopy on Kamala Harris with their heads, they don't have time to do things like ask questions. And yes, she's winning right now because it turns out that being treated like a girl boss for strutting around saying platitudes while Megan the Stallion twerks is a lot easier than, you know, being good at being vice president or senator or attorney general or DA. But we did get a TikTok with NSYNC's Lance Bass before we got her thoughts on Israel. Hey, Kamala, what are we going to say to Donald Trump in November? Bye, bye, bye. Baby, bye, bye, bye. I'm old enough to remember when that guy was straight. It's all incredibly frustrating to watch, but that's the point, too. Asking real questions is now against the rules. The media have done their job this news cycle. They put Joe Biden down like old yeller, and now they are all in for Kamala. So it's Trump against Harris and an entire media dedicated to making Harris president and exploiting her brat energy. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? (laughs) Oh, yeah, and white dudes, too. Get the placemat out when you're with a kindergartner and you're looking at the placemat of the presidents. Not one woman. Monday night, a week after two similar Zoom events took place, black women for Harris and white women for Harris, it was time for be penis people to declare their fealty to the queen. Yes, it was time for white dudes for Harris, not white men for Harris. White men are bad. White dudes, you know, like bros. Bros who have vagina envy. I mean, look at these guys. They should call their coalition the Low Tea Party. In a kink that can only be described as political cuckoldry, almost 200,000 white alleged men gathered on Zoom for a three and a half hour fundraising call for Kamala Harris in hopes of supporting and elevating the voice of black women. And three and a half hours? Why, for those dudes, that's enough time to watch Steel Magnolias and most of Beaches. Anyway, these extremely masculine humans raised $4 million by selling almost 6,000 white dudes for Harris trucker caps, which will now make it very easy to spot which weird creeps to avoid at the local truck stop. The meeting's opening remarks were from Maurice Mitchell, the Working Families Party National Director, who's black and whose words helped reassure any uncomfortable participants it was okay to be there. You see, here was a black man saying a whites-only space was fine. Well, yeah, because no normal black dude would want to be in that space. The space wasn't segregated. It was a leper colony. Anyway, some of Hollywood's biggest names were on the call, mostly because they were too afraid to be called out for not being on it. So actor Jeff Bridges showed up, high as a kite, and proclaimed, a woman president, man, how exciting. Wise words, sir. Wise words. He was joined by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who is also still looking for Ellen Page ever since inception. Sean Astin, who you'll remember from being offsides in Rudy. Josh Gad, who is most famous for playing an effeminate snowman. And J.J. Abrams, who for some reason kept shining a flashlight at his computer camera to achieve lens flare. I'm working on a shot. I think, oh, this would be really cool. There's a lens flare. And since there was celebrity ass to kiss, Washington Democrats showed up too. White House infrastructure czar Mitch Landrew Representative Adam Schiff of California and Doug Jones logged on, now excited to show their support since their candidate is no longer a stiff vegetable. Rather, she's a wormy coconut. And Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg spoke too, saying, quote, the vibes right now are incredible, thus completing his transition into a 22-year-old at Coachella's Instagram caption. This event does sound like a fundraising success, though. It opens the door for even more Zoom calls. Asians for Harris, German Shepherds for Harris, former MTV Road Rules cast members for Harris, and my personal favorite, Harris for Harris. That's a 24-hour Zoom where Kamala just rants and laughs about her childhood. No one else would possibly want to be on that call. Kamala has answered zero questions. When you're looking for great employees, you need all your questions answered, and this is why we use Zip Recruiter. 
We at Daily Wire, we've hired a lot of highly skilled people to be part of this growing creative powerhouse, editors, attorneys, engineers, and we've used ZipRecruiter extensively. Whether you need to hire a civil engineer in New York or a pediatric nurse in Nebraska or an attorney in Colorado or a mascot in Michigan, you need ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter finds qualified candidates fast for all kinds of roles. Right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. ZipRecruiter knows how to get things done quickly and efficiently. Then just cast a wide net and hope for the best. ZipRecruiter's cutting edge technology actively seeks candidates with the skills and experience you need. Once you've reviewed your list of qualified candidates, you can invite your top choices to apply. This streamlined process encourages them to apply sooner, allowing you to fill that role faster. From accountant to zoologist, ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster and easier. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the very first day. Try it for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Again, that is ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. ZipRecruiter is indeed the smartest way to hire. So this past week, I was told I made a brief cameo on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. I responded in a somewhat panicked manner. Have I time traveled to 2003? Where are my children? What year is it? Apparently, I had not time traveled. My children are fine. John, on the other hand, not so fine. See, this year, John unceremoniously returned to The Daily Show after completely falling apart on Apple Plus with a show he called The Problem with Jon Stewart. I'm going to assume it didn't work because people already know the problem with Jon Stewart. He's 61 years old and still doesn't know most basic things, but pretends he's smart by making the same obnoxious, snarky faces my 10-year-old sometimes makes. More on that later. First, let's watch the clip. Do you have anything else that could denigrate all of Kamala Harris's accomplishments by suggesting it's merely the power of the Jezebel? It is relevant when a young candidate tries to sleep her way into politics and into power. And that is what it appears Kamala Harris did. She's never earned or won anything. Like she, she was legitimately handed her original posts in California state government because she was sleeping with Willie Brown. And then he backed her in her race for San Francisco DA. Okay, Squeaks. Listen. <laughs> I don't know, guys. You're being awfully subtle here. Listen, I'm fine with Squeaks. It's nicer than half the stuff people say about me. And I will be the first to admit my voice sounds like a Smurf with a head cold. At the same time, I am five foot nine. And Jon Stewart is a midgetly five foot seven. He's also a complete cynical boob. By this, I mean that his entire game is to ignore issues in favor of cheap insults. That's literally what he does, like all the time. There are never any arguments. What's amazing is that Jon Stewart is largely responsible for having turned all of American politics into that exact same game. So let's actually jump in the time machine all the way back to 2004, when, you know, that guy had a daily show. A young Jon Stewart appeared with liberal Paul Begala and bow-tied much younger Tucker Carlson on a show called CNN's Crossfire. Now, you might not remember Crossfire. This was a show that featured people from either side of the aisle talking about the issues on CNN. I know, sounds crazy, but it was on the air every day. And Jon Stewart hated that. Here he was, being an asshole. I made a special effort to come on the show today because I have uh, privately amongst my friends and also in occasional newspapers and television shows. <laughs> mentioned uh, this show as being uh, uh, bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and, and, and I wanted to, I felt that that wasn't fair and I should come here and, and tell you that I don't, it's not so much that it's bad as it's hurting America. <laughs> so I, I wanted to but come here today let me, and say, wait, wait, no, I just, let me, here, here, here's just one, what I wanted to tell you guys. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Stop hurting America. Okay, now let me, and and let come me work you. for us because we, as the people, how do you pay? The people, not not well. Better than CNN, I'm sure. But you can sleep at night. <laughs> See, the 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 thing is, we need your your help. You're right now. You're helping the politicians and the the, the, the corporations, and we're left out Wait, there to mow our lawns. We're too rough on them when they make mistakes. No, no, no. You're not too rough on them. You are part of their strategies. You're partisan. Um, what do you call it? Hacks. Now, note the critique here. Crossfire was bad. It was, how, how do you say, you know, hurting America. Why? Because while Jon Stewart had what he called civilized discourse on his program, they were partisan, what do you, how do you call it? Hacks. All politicians, according to Jon Stewart, were lying about their arguments, said the great, mighty, moral Jon Stewart. Only Jon Stewart was honest with you. And you could tell he was honest because he was a comedian who made funny faces and was honest enough to admit he wasn't going to even try to ask anybody a tough question. You know, honesty. And also he said Tucker Carlson was a dick and that he was 35 and wore a bow tie. Well, now Jon Stewart is 61 and is a dick and wears the same outfits he wore when he was 35, which, if you're keeping score back home, was back when I was 14 years old and in high school. That is seven years younger than my father. He's still trying to play cool like Steve Buscemi on 30 Rock. 
How do you do, fellow kids? What? He's no longer Michael Air Jordan. He's Michael Jordan on the Wizards. His routine hasn't changed. He's an actual honest-to-God partisan hack who undermines civilized discourse. He holds zero positions that are disapproved by the Democratic Party elite. He makes arguments that are specious and empty and stupid. And then he plays a clip, and then he makes a funny face. But the thing is, that's because Jon Stewart won. See, he showed that the safest pathway to success is to be a clown, but a plausibly deniable clown. So CNN doesn't have political debates anymore. They stopped all that. You're not going to have Tucker Carlson versus Paul Begali. You'll just have a bunch of people who agree with each other. Now, half the anchors are doing bad Jon Stewart imitations from 2004. Play clip. Make funny face. Don't take the argument seriously. Don't bring facts. Easier to throw out an insult or a rubbery smile. See, Jon Stewart's a coward. He's always been a coward. If he had the courage of his convictions, he wouldn't put on the clown nose every time he's questioned about his politics. Every time somebody asks him a serious question, he goes, mm, I'm just a comedian. Instead, he might remove the squirting rose from his lapel when it's time for one of his shallow and idiotic hot takes. That guy runs away from actual political argumentation faster than he ran away from his birth name. Too Jewish, you know, really courageous, Mr. Leibowitz. Well, here's the truth. John Stewart did win the war. He converted all political media into tired one-liners and dumb mugging. Honest conversation across the aisle, which is what Crossfire actually was, can now only be found online. And so we invite John Stewart on this show anytime, unfiltered, to have an honest conversation about his own role in destroying America and making it worse. We need his help. Live, so no one can edit it and just make dumb faces. Well, the media love to lie to you, but you need to wake up to the truth. The best way to wake up generally is the way I wake up, Black Rifle Coffee. Black Rifle Coffee helps you wake up every morning feeling dialed in, ready to make the most of your day. Now is your chance to get 20% off your purchase with code DAILYWIRE at BlackRifleCoffee.com. Black Rifle Coffee's explosive coffees are roasted right here in the United States by a veteran-led team of expert roasters who take pride in serving coffee and culture to people who love America. Every purchase you make helps them further their mission to support veteran and first responder causes. Everything from getting funding and equipment to first responders to helping veterans get medical care. Black Rifle Coffee has a huge selection of dark roast, light roast, and everything in between. Take the coffee quiz on their website. Get matched with a blend perfectly tailored to your specific tastes. Again, a portion of every purchase you make with Black Rifle Coffee goes towards supporting veteran and first responder causes. Your money goes a long way toward giving back to those who serve our nation. Head on over to BlackRifleCoffee.com right now. Use code DAILYWIRE for 20% off America's coffee. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com, code DAILYWIRE, BlackRifleCoffee.com, code DAILYWIRE. Now, a lot has already been said about last weekend's Olympics opening ceremony in Paris. I have to assume we're all a little sick of seeing the performance that we've been calling around here RuPaul's Hometown Buffet. We all saw it was a mockery of the Last Supper and an attack on Christianity. And then we heard it was actually an homage to the Greek god Dionysus. And if you still have questions about it, well, you hate gay people or something. <laughs> and to prove you don't hate gay people, the Olympics will just show you this dude's balls hanging out. And you'll have to prove you like it. Well, like a Democrat trying to make her way in California politics, the opening ceremony sucked. I don't care about how or why you defend this. The entire cast was gay, trans, queer. But above all, they were just untalented. First, if you're going to feature blue men in your performance, they better be banging on a drum in Vegas or be David Cross in Arrested Development. Instead, they said that the Greek god of wine was a gay dude with a dad bod who for some reason had chewed the Willy Wonka three-course dinner chewing gum. Singing off key, looking like a weird Will Ferrell SNL character. If this was part of a local YMCA talent show, 80% of the participants would be committed to a mental hospital. I wouldn't call what they're doing here to like dancing choreography or talent or enjoyable or impressive. Last time I checked, posing for Instagram does not get you a medal. The song that this blue man is singing is actually about how the world's problems would be solved if we went back to being naked, which coming from that weirdo is the type of stuff that should keep you 500 feet from schools. Come on, why would anyone think this was a performance mocking The Last Supper? It's not like it looks exactly like The Last Supper. For not being The Last Supper, it, well... This reminds me of when Vanilla Ice said he didn't sample Under Pressure by Queen for Ice Ice Baby. It's not the same bass line. Uh, like it goes ding, 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 diggy, ding, ding. Ding, 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 diggy, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. That's the way theirs goes. Ours goes ding, 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 diggy, ding, ding. Ding, 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 diggy, ding, ding. That little bitty change. 
it's not the same. Mm -hmm. I can certainly guarantee you that it's not that girl in the middle's last supper. So I guess the point here is, before you turn the Olympics into a drag show, perhaps think to yourself, is this something they could just, you know, set out? Like, does every single category of human being have to be a part of everything just because you're scared they'll get mad at you? Just because it can happen doesn't mean it should. Just ask Madam Webb. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. Oh my God, this movie's so bad. It's just terrible. Well, speaking of completely unexplainable Olympic stupidity, on Thursday, Emane Khalif, an Algerian fighter competing in the field of women's boxing, proved that she's the man, or man-like, or fights like a man, or has XY chromosomes. It only took 46 seconds and two punches to the face for her opponent, Angela Carini of Italy, to surrender in pain, crying. The reason for this is as obvious as Khalif's apple. It's because at the 2023 World Championships, a big precursor for the Olympics, Khalif failed gender eligibility tests and was rightfully banned from competing, which makes sense because people who have an unfair advantage should not be punching women in the face for sport or recreation or R&B. Yet for the largest stage in world sports, Khalif, who did not pass regulations previously, suddenly complied with the regulations. Despite elevated levels of testosterone just a few months ago, Khalif was allowed to walk into the ring and assault a woman in the name of fair competition. It was so one-sided that 20 minutes later, a bruised Karini told reporters through tears, she's, quote, never taken a punch like that. It was impossible to continue. She revealed, I started to feel a strong pain in my nose. The punch hurt too much. Guys, even Juana Mann was banned from basketball at the end of the movie. What are the Olympics thinking? Between their last supper that looked like a two-for-one mimosas brunch in Wilton Manors, the fact that swimmers are competing in water that was alarmingly contaminated with poop less than a week ago, there's a convicted child rapist on the Netherlands volleyball team, and now olive oil fighting Bluto until he broke her nose. France is sure being pretty French. You know what? Maybe their Last Supper literally was a Last Supper for any woman boxing this year. Well, at least the United States has a good future strategy for the women's boxing tournament next time. Recruit Chris Brown. Folks, we've hit the end of this week's Ben After Dark. For more suffering, tune in next week.